Welcome, everybody, players included, uh, <laughs> to the USS Guan Yu, uh, session seven of our second season. Uh, back from a little bit of a hiatus for me, uh, your uh, humble GM, Tyler. Uh, so for this, uh, last time, last we left off, uh, I wasn't there. Uh, I heard that there was some fun shenanigans with four nanoprobes. I heard that some... Uh, fun radiation stuff happened. That was great. Um, and I, uh, more importantly, I heard that there was some <laughs> uh, work on the on Nishizumi and Commander Kelly's tank. I heard that there is now a holographic prototype of that available. Uh, however, the last session where I was around, uh, the crew of the USS Guan Yu was... <laughs> undertaken by uh, Starfleet Intelligence. Uh, the USS Tenjin uh, arrived uh, containing a <laughs> containing a commander uh, Lieutenant Commander Detrol from Starfleet Intelligence. Uh, you through uh, looking through a Romulan data pad that was taken off of this saboteur from and making some inferences uh you have un you have <laughs> discovered an apparent dominion plot to throw the Romul romulans and the federation into a conflict um a conflict already exists between the federation and the klingons and i'll say mm, we're about three or four days after your shenanigans with uh with our guest gm um the klingon war you all know um you all may or may not have friends serving on the front lines or who are working in logistics or working in intelligence for some of us uh, <coughs> kelly um the <laughs> the war call does me not... out why don't you <laughs> the war with the klingons is not going um the federation has been trying to open up some sort of communication with Chancellor Gowron, and what's been trickling down through the ranks is they are not interested in talking. They're interested in uh, continuing to conquer a Cardassian territory, as well as take back their losses from previous Federation conflicts in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. Um, where we leave our characters, uh, <laughs> our wonderful players, the crew, um, you're all sitting in Deep Space Fortitude. Um, your transport mission was a success, as that's what I heard. Um, and you have a decked out uh, Saber class, the USS Tenjin, uh, ready and fitted with a cloaking device. And I'm interested to see, I mean, hopefully you would all be meeting together, but um, you are either on the Starbase or back on the Guan Yu. Um, I leave a meeting place up to you, but uh, time is now to make some plans. So I open it up to the players. Uh, what would you I, like to do? Actually, um, I need to work with the person that they have that is experienced in deprogramming Romulan operatives, try and help the First Minister mm. you know, not be brainwashed anymore. I see. They were okay. working on that while Kelly and Nishizumi installed the cloaking device. Just okay. Ran out of time. Okay, great. Um, so the... Awesome. Great. Uh, the intelligence attaché um, you know the person in charge of the sort of intelligence uh, presence on board the station right now is uh, Lieutenant Commander Det uh, Detral, um, your Romulan intelligence friend. Um, you know that they have been attempting to break in to a break through that conditioning. Uh, you don't know any specifics, though, from that. Mm -hmm. Um, in that case, I, I know that I, I said I wanted to do this last time. I don't know if we covered it, but Hagen has been trying to, like, 
theorize on ways that a combination of both traditional deprogramming and uh, something to alter brain chemistry, because she knows that that the Romulans do chemical conditioning as well as you know psychological to try and undo what the Romulans have done. Mm. Uh, do you think I could make some kind of role to see if I think that's possible? I think that that's a great idea. Uh... <laughs> um, Doctor Hagen, why don't you go ahead and make me? Hmm. So specifically, you're looking at to see if those things are possible and slash or how you would move forward with that. Yes. Um, okay. And as justification for that, I have the focuses of neurology and xenobiology. So I feel like that covers all, all bases there. Uh, yeah, I think that that definitely neurobiology more than xenobiology in this specific instance. But I will... I will have you give me, yeah, it's going to be your favorite role. Give me a reason medicine role. Um, hmm. What should the difficulty be? I'm going to have a base difficulty of, for this be a two. Um, just to see, yeah, you're looking to see if it's possible and what you know about deprogramming as well as, yeah, different, different strategies. You're also, uh, remembering and, and possibly even looking through Federation logs to see how it's been done before. Uh, go ahead and give me that Reason Medicine difficulty 2. Okay. Um, I think that in this case, because I don't have any momentum, I'm going to spend the Starfleet Surgeon's Decoration and try and reduce that difficulty and perform this task. Okay. Uh, the uh, surgeon decoration reduces it to one, correct? Yes. By one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is now reason medicine difficulty of one. All righty. And then neurology as the focus. And nice. I will give you a threat to buy a dice. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me that roll. I will do it. <laughs> That was a close one, but that'll do it. Okay. There it is for me. Awesome. Uh, that is uh, two momentum generated on that. Um, yeah, so what you... <laughs> it's actually really interesting. Um, you're correct in your assumption. Um, there are generally with Romulan... In... <laughs> with the Romulans, they do... It's generally either a two-pronged approach or they do one or the other. Uh, between, uh, you know, uh, psychological uh, conditioning and chemical conditioning. Um, you're thinking chemical conditioning is pretty unlikely in this situation. Um, you know that you you conducted thorough brain scans of the First Minister, and you've taken uh, hormone levels, you've taken everything that you could possibly think of, um, mm -hmm. And everything appears to be normal, other than, of course, that uh, <laughs> that you know, implant but... that they had, uh, but right. that he had. But um, you're thinking just from where you're sitting right now, it's most likely psychological. Um, you know that the Romulans do this in a couple of different ways, um, mostly by replicating different forms of stimuli. Mm -hmm. um, you know that. And actually, if you want, I'll I'll give you a, I'll give you this uh, without any obtained information spends. Um, you know that they, I mean, the most powerful triggers for psychological conditioning are st uh, stimulating the five senses. You know that mm -hmm. pain is a part of that. Um, mm -hmm. You know that the visual stimul stimulus is really a part of that. A really strong one is smell. Um, that sort of thing can be simulated uh, to con to start the conditioning process. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'll give you a little, I'll give you more if you spend a momentum for obtaining information. Since I earned two of them, I I'll will give spend you more one momentum for a uh, obtain information spend here. Apologies, you want to repeat that? Um, 
since I earned two of them, I will spend one of them for that obtain information. Okay. Uh, the obtain information basically goes to you're you're actively looking through Starfleet's databases, and actually you run into a little bit of an interference from Starfleet intelligence. However, um, given the nature of the mission that you're about to undertake, um, you see that barriers start to be lifted from your path, and you. <laughs> you find a specific instance, um, an, a chief engineering officer on board the previous flagship of the of the Federation of the Star of Starfleet, uh, the USS Enterprise, uh, someone by the name of Jordi LaForge. Um, they mm -hmm. were a victim of of Romulan conditioning. Um, it was that two pronged approach. I believe they use a chemical and and stimuli. So, and looking at LaForge's sort of debriefing after that instance, um, you think back. You definitely think that that picture that you got when you tried to enter First Minister Arlen's psyche, that picture mm -hmm. of you know, the rolling waves and the sand with the with the alien tree. Uh, cloudy sky. Um, the fact that that was put forward first, um, that was definitely a large part of the conditioning. Um, you can make inferences off of that if you'd like, um, but you get, yeah, definitely a form of comfort, and then you think that they would push past that. And only when the subject is unable to take any more stimuli, do they return back to that calm, peaceful beach? Um, one that's do, familiar to the First Minister. Do I think that perhaps recreating the calming section of it and pulling, trying to pull him out from that place, get him to that place first, and then pull him out from there would be easier than just trying to traditionally deprogram? You think that that is <laughs> that is definitely a thing that you can try. You know that the I mean the intelligence people haven't really had the experience. They didn't actually bring any telepaths with them um, to do right. this. Um, so you you have that insight. Uh, you think that it could probably lead you to some sort of answers if you were to maybe bring the first minister into a simulated environment. Okay, so then in that case, I'm going to hit my comm badge. Uh, Dr. Hagen, to uh, what was the, the trans rank? Uh, uh, com uh, Lieutenant Commander. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Detran, um, I have I've had an idea. Um, uh, will you meet me in uh, sick bay uh, as soon as you can? Okay. I'm on my way. The trawl out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, while that is going on, what is everybody else doing? Again, this is happening. This was happening while we were installing the cloak. Ah, I see. Yeah. We're still in the. I love it when we start somewhere and then we go into the past. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Doctor Hagen, uh, you are you on the Guan Yu or are you aboard uh, DC Fortitude? I would have been aboard Deep Space Fortitude, I think. Or, unless, sorry, no, I didn't we hear that. Deep Space Fortitude has a uh, CMO, correct? Can, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah, Deep Space Fortitude has a CMO, correct? Um, <laughs> no, there's just eighteen nurses working as a collective. <laughs> If Strange New well, Worlds yeah. told us anything, beware the nurses. Uh, you know <laughs> the real. <laughs> uh, yes, they do have a chief medical officer. In that case, I'd be aboard the Guan Yu. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, you are. You see, after a moment, um, Detral uh, begins to yeah walks right in. And yes, this is helpful because I believe the first minister is still in the sick bay. 
Uh, I did not hear any other orders to countermand that. Yep, still in sick bay. Great. So, um, Lieutenant Commander, um, so I have been reading up on Romulan uh, sublimation techniques that when they, where they are uh, the brainwashing, basically. Mm. I believe I may have a method by which we can at least begin to pull the first minister out of the state that he currently finds himself. Um, there, when I engaged in telepathic contact with him, the very first image that came up was a nondescript beach on some world, presumably Orien, and it was a place of of comfort and calm, and the further I tried to delve into it, the more oppressive and difficult everything became. So, my thought is, if that is that, if we can recreate the environment that I saw, maybe perhaps on the, on the holodeck, bring that mental space into the physical world, perhaps we can pull him from whatever catatonia the Romulans have seemed to have forced him into. Uh, you see the Romulan uh, Starfleet agent sort of thinks for a moment and says, well, Doctor, that seems to be a viable approach. One problem that I have with that is that, unfortunately, the holodeck cannot travel with the First Minister. So it may be that <laughs> it may be that this beach is comforting to the First Minister, but what happens when they leave? Well, that, that would be the issue. But if we can at least bring him to the present for a moment, we could gain vital intelligence. He was deep enough in the Romulan's base that he met face-to-face -face with what is presumably your father, though possibly a changeling. Mm. Um, yeah, you see the Romulan sort of go, make a face that's akin to like, yeah, we all, yeah, okay, <laughs> just keep moving. <laughs> but if he was that deep, and they were saying things to him enough to reveal partially what their plan is, we could have a bug in the heart of the Romulan conspiracy here. Doctor, I believe that this is warranted. I I will allow you to do what you think is necessary. My agents, my attache have not been... We've pretty much just had this and uh, the, um, Detral motions to the First Minister, and First Minister is still in that catatonic mm -hmm. sort of laying down. Doesn't appear to be in distress in any way, but no, but he, he's not moving. He's not right. responding. Mm -hmm. um, so would you like to assist? I... <laughs> the, the, uh, the agent actually uh, sort of looks down and says, my area of expertise is not in deep programming and Frankly, I believe a Romulan face may bring more harm than good. Possibly. There is also, however, the possibility that because the Romulan faces are associated with his triggers, your presence could prompt him to respond. Hmm. Well, if you will allow me, I would be happy to assist. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Do you do you want me to call you by your rank name? Agent is fine. Doc. Agent. Agent. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Uh, Saral. And I'm gonna motion. I'm I'm gonna start to get the first minister up and onto like a. Do they have stretchers? Like, what's the anti-grav? Yeah, so they have those anti-grab sort of beds. 
And go grab right. sled opportunity mm-hmm. two. <laughs> I won't charge you for it. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, we'll no, give me your obviously going to be one. Yeah, totally. somewhere. Um, yeah, you see, actually, Look, the just because bed... it's somewhere there doesn't mean the quartermaster is going to let it go without a fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, the uh, the first minister isn't on you know the center like big bio bed. Um, he's mm-hmm. actually on one of the auxiliary beds, and actually, <laughs> with uh, the upgrades that you guys have been making, the bed actually has an anti-grav function to it. You tap a couple of... You see the bed comes uncoupled from the wall and begins floating sort of out and then stops. There are some benefits to being on a prototype. Um, this way. <laughs> I'm going to take the holodeck. You you walk out into the hallway and you see a light flickering out in the out in the hallway. And some disadvantages. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> that brings a smile to my face every time it happens. Uh, and <laughs> uh, the uh, bed goes down the holodeck. Um, I know that there are repairs ongoing, um, and I know that um, Mizuzumi and uh, Commander Kelly. Are doing that. Um, do 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 do. Uh, Edwards, is there anything that you'd like to do during this sort of time, or are you just coordinating everything? Coordinating and planning. Coordinating okay. and planning. <laughs> Paperwork sounds That's sounds fun. Awesome. Um, yeah, Doctor Hagen, we'll uh, we'll continue here. Pork, 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 pork. Um, <laughs> my dogs are out in the hallway. Um, the <laughs> I promise uh, I do not mean to take up the first half of this episode. <laughs> no, 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 totally fine. I, I, I always just want to ask because we will, after this scene, there will be we will yeah we go to the, be where we should start. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. The um. Yeah. You walk. You bring the first minister into. I'm assuming holodeck one. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. The Romulan looks around and says, well, I don't know what exactly the beach looks like. I believe you'll be in charge of programming this. Um, yes, quite. Uh, let me see here. Computer. Um, I would like to construct a holographic environment. A, a beach on the planet designation Orien. Um... One of the smaller islands, uh, calm weather, bright sunny skies, balmy 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, okay. Processing. Um, after what seems to be actually a pretty decently long time, uh, you see the environment. Um, you are standing on yellow sand. Um, looking out on sort of actually a little bit, the water seems a little bit darker and a little bit more choppy. Um, the beach hmm. seems to be the way it is. Um, the sky is a little bit more overcast, um, but you are on a beach. Uh, computer, clear clouds. Do-do! Uh, the it is now a very sunny, uh, clear day. Computer reduce uh, wave choppiness sixty percent. Uh, you see the a nice, nice rolling sort of ebbing and flowing ocean, not completely flat, but nice. Uh, engage a twenty-one mile per hour wind nor'easter. 21 mile per hour, okay. Uh, 21 actually, miles a gust per hour of wind. On, a, on a beach is barely noticeable. It's okay. constant. Yeah. yeah. I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah, a, a nice sort of ocean wind comes um, up. Add seabirds. Tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> All right. That's you're you're it. really going to have me reach down into my bag of tricks to pull out those birds. Work for <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking work for it, dude. 
<laughs> anyway, um, all right, we're about where we were, First Minister. Any response? Um, give me. Hmm. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, these gifts are too much. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> uh, the first minister. Um, you see, the shoulders, which are normally actually pretty tense, uh. I'm the first minister. Uh, relax. Um, there's still the restraining field in place, um, but uh, the first minister looks around uh, and does not say anything. Hello. First minister, this is my friend, uh, Agent de Trump. Um, the, <laughs> the first minister looks at the Romulan agent and immediately stiffens. Don't worry. She's with us. She's here to help. You see the first minister actually is attempting to sit up, but is running into the restraining field. I will, um, ease the restraint on his chest still keeping it, like, kind of around his waist so they can't, like, bolt. Okay. Um, yeah, Im immediately after the restraining field, the hum sort of dies down a little. Um, the First Minister sits up and looks up at the sky. Um, make an insight. Yeah, insight medicine. Uh, um, would telepathic prowess apply? Uh, yes, if you're trying to get a, um, if you're trying to get a telepathic sense from him, or if you're just trying to read him, it's going to be different. Uh, it's kind of both for me. Okay, so, yeah, guess, great. Awesome. Yeah. Telepathic yeah. sense. Give me, uh, difficulty two. All righty. I will buy a dice with some momentum. Cool. And, uh, te sight telepathic prowess as a focus. Uh, yep, I'd allow that. All right, generate one more, uh, one momentum. Um, I'm gonna re-roll that eighteen just in case. Okay. There you go. Hey, two momentum generated on that. Um, you see, the first one is sort of looks up at the sun, and. He recognizes that this isn't... Yeah, you immediately get the sensation that he recognizes that this isn't... He's not home. Right. Now. Right. Um, right. But you do get... You do get a sort of wave of... It's kind of like... Like a baby... When a baby sort of is crying really, really loud and is super, like, not happy... And then right. the baby like calms down and looks at you and smiles. That sort of difference, but relief. Like that sort of hits you. Um <laughs> that was a weird analogy, but uh <laughs> No, I, I got it. I immediately understood what you were talking about. Yeah. Uh you see the first minister looks down and and says words. I cannot move my legs. That is um, your safety, as well as ours. Well, am I... Where, where, not, where is you're this? Not any... You are currently we're not, we're abroad. We're home, right? No. Um, this is a piece of technology that we have called a holodeck. It allows us to simulate environments. I have recreated a slice of your home to bring you to a place that is more comfortable. Perhaps we can, a place that we can talk. What, what do you want to talk about? Well, I saw 
a very interesting memory that you had. If you'll um, recall, you allowed me access. Yeah. You feel nervous. Sort of. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. You are safe here. I... No one can hurt you here. <laughs> Um, yeah, give me, uh, presence, uh, and I'll, I'll allow medicine. Um, okay. this is going to be a big, a big one. This uh, is where I would ha normally have Dora Thal in the room, but, uh, it, sorry. Hi. Um, difficult, uh, for everybody listening, uh, sometimes audio just stops. So I leave and come back, and it's automatically fine again. It's probably something to do with port forwarding, but I don't have access to the router. Um, so, yeah, presence medicine, this is difficulty. I'm tempted. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oppose. Uh, okay. Um, then I am going to cite a determination here. Okay. A value of Starfleet is here to help. Yeah. Yep. That absolutely works. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to use that value. I'm going to buy a dice with momentum. And uh, uh, I'm buying two, two dice. Oops. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say give you two threat to get another dice. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to spend three threat to get four dice. Um, and I'm spending three... Ooh, no, no, no. I will spend one... Sorry. I will spend one threat for a third dice and spend three threat to spend towards a value. Mm. Which is a thing that I can do. Uh, yeah, so this is, um, control, okay, um, yeah, this, this is big, um, I will, I will say that right, right on the onset. Um, then I'm going to use the star cross here to oh, okay. double my focus range. Okay, great. Uh, that is, yeah, go ahead and... Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm going to re-roll that 18 just for funsies. Uh, crit 20. Oh. And that's another two successes. Sheesh. Okay. Actually, that's all together. That's two, four, six, eight, ten successes. Uh, I have a re-roll. Um, hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use a talent that I have to re-roll those two. I'm trying to fish here. I actually don't believe I can even win. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you got me. Um, you gain uh, for that. <laughs> you gain one. So I got six in total. You got ten. Correct. So four momentum. Yeah. Okay. Um, you so you have this telepathic link, and you guys have had this link for a while. Um, mm -hmm. you feel immediately something not of the first minister, completely different, comes out and tries. You f you feel it, and you actually have to steady yourself tries to smash down on that link and try to sever it in a way that hurts you and potentially incapacitates you. Uh, how? But you hold strong and you feel this malevolent presence inside the First Minister vanish. Um, what you feel is relief. I, I, 
Yeah. Hagen kind of like steadies herself immediately on the side of the bio bed, like, whoa. Oh, whoa. What in the world? Where? The, the, vo- the voices, where did they? They're. Oh, dear, that. I look up at Detron and I'm just like, your people know what they're doing. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, the <laughs> Detrol um, makes no, uh, you don't get any uh, read from her, telepathically or otherwise. Uh, <laughs> um, As I said, the... First Minister, you're safe here. No one can hurt you. Can my... My my family are they are d- have they're you found fine. them yet? We're working on it. Okay. Right at the moment, the Romulans believe that you are dead. You're you're sure. Positive on that. We announced it. Okay. And unfortunately, you did explode rather violently, several hundred kilometers to the starboard of our vessel. <laughs> The first minister laughs. Um, <laughs> that is just so precious. Oh god, you yeah. There's a lot that I have that I need to speak to somebody about. Yeah, are you the person for you? Agent Detron is here. Okay. Here's what I know. I was attending the pre <laughs> the previous president's uh, resignation ceremony. I went back to my quarters. Somebody grabbed me. I woke up. I was strapped down on a table. I couldn't move. Kind of like now. Actually, could you remove the the restraining so, field? That one, one moment. I. Undo the leg restraints. Thank you. Uh, he stands up. Uh, <laughs> his uh, one thing that I haven't really talked about is the clothes that he's that he's wearing. He is wearing actually pretty decent looking clothes, just sort of a cloak, you know, with um, sort of like a dark, darker red color um, that sort of accentuates off of his light blue sort of uh, amphibious uh, skin. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I was strapped down. They said that they had my family and that if I attempted to escape, which I couldn't, I don't know why they thought that I would escape, that they would kill them. I remember hearing things about the Dominion. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Pause for a moment. What exactly did you hear about the Dominion? Well, the... Everything is just such a blur, I... Maybe I can help. Um, and I... Can I try to, like... Sharpen the memories? Like, telepathically? Like, try to help him access them better? Um... I'll do you one better. Uh, for... Mm -hmm. Momentum, I'll just tell you without... (laughs) <laughs> I'll just show you with the memories. It's a trick. Don't spend it. We can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sort of tap into the link that you and the First Minister have. You see... You're looking out of a window, and you see purple and pink gas. Um, no stars, no black void. All you see around, outside of the window is just a large field of glass. You feel like you're under artificial gravity. You know that you're on a station. Um, Nebula. I say that out loud. Yeah. Um, You see the First Minister actually stands in front of you in the memory and looks to the left and you see another image of the First Minister lying down on a bed uh, with full straps and a large apparatus covering the the face. 
um, you sort of see the image blur come back into focus and you see standing in front of you in one of the times that <laughs> you actually take on the perspective of First Minister Arlen in the chair out the window that's next to the door to this room that you're being held in you see the head and shoulders of a creature you know to be a Vorta. You see behind uh, the Vorta, uh, you've read intelligence logs about the Dominion, you see two troops. Two of the... Oh, God, I'm, I'm just basing on the name. Jemadar? Uh, yeah. You see two Jemadar troops behind the Vorta speaking to a Romulan in sort of the hallway. You can't hear anything that they're saying. You just see this sort of still image, and then you feel something cover your eyes again. And you find yourself back on that beach in the holodeck, the First Minister standing in front of you. Doctor, I... Hope we. Un I hope you understand. I hope you got something from that. Oh, I got a lot from that. I back out of his memory and I look up at uh, the troll and I go. They were meeting with Avorta and Jemeda. The troll says, "Yeah." I think we need to get to this place now. What do you think? It, you're right. It's in a nebula. Um, purplish hue. What, what gases cause purple hue? I... Neon. Mm. Neon, argon, nebula. Um, uh, and um, you see... The <laughs> uh, Detral looks at you and says, follow me. We need to get to the rest of the senior staff. And yes. you um, run uh, out. Uh, Sorry. Okay, I'm going to assume we make accommodations for the first minister. <laughs> yeah, the first minister goes, okay, I'll, um, yeah, I'll find, it. I'll, I'll find something. And I've got my nicest cell picked out for him, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> He's not actually guilty this time. <laughs> That's why it's my nicest. And now we uh, fast forward um, to five minutes later, um, where you all are gathered on board uh, a conference room in DS Fortitude. Um, Captain uh, uh, Commander Edwards, you know that uh, Captain Lee, um, he was just given orders to remain on board the Guan Yu. And take it out to put, you know, go towards the original plan, which was to go towards the quasar that was sort of bordering the Romulan neutral zone. Uh, he took the Guan Yu potentially to give you backup if you need it. Um, which means, Commander Edwards, you are in command currently of the USS Tenjin. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, how long until everyone gets their eyes? Uh, the cloak's installed, so Nishizumi and Kelly should at least be on their way. Hagen and... Yeah. Uh, everybody starts filing in. Right on cue. <laughs> Man, it's really taking so long. Everybody walks in at the same time. Wow, we must be in a TV show or something. <laughs> Edward's just weird. Like walking at the same time. Y'all wait outside until you're gathered up, right? <laughs> I know that trick. Actually, no, I, I I was walking up to the door as Kelly was, and it, it was weird coincidence. Well, perfect timing. All right. Um, so, cloaks installed. Good job, Kelly Nishizumi. Doctor, you said you had something. I guess when it works. We have our heading. At least, Lieutenant Commander Deshaul does. I know where this is going to be. 
um, you see that she pulls up a map of sort of the surrounding area that encompasses the Romulan neutral zone. You see in the middle of the Romulan neutral zone, I don't have a map for you right now, but you see a sort of large nebula that is extended from from out from on the Federation side, well, from the Shackleton side of the neutral zone to inside of the Romulan neutral zone. Um, so uh, you see that that is about a two days journey away from where you are right now. It's uh, two days at what warp though? Uh, two days at uh, max warp. So if you're thinking like, oh. That's actually a really good question. Yeah, at um, two days at your cruising speed. It is, um, uh, so as I'm getting this information, I turn to Kelly, and at cruising speed, are we going to be noticeable through the cloak? Shouldn't be. Sorry, what? I said, uh, at cruising speed, I'm talking to Kelly, if we're going to be noticeable at the cloak, are we going to be putting out too much power or mm. wakes? I don't know. Okay. They're a lot smaller than most Romulan ships. That cloak should do us fine. Okay. Perfect. Should. And what would be the result if we were to run at maximum? Ship this size? Hard to say. Uh, Commander Kelly, give me a reason engineering roll. Difficulty of two. All right. Reason engineering. Does espionage come into play? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Don't you have a don't you have a focus and cloaking system? Oh. oh yes, yes I do. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to having that one. <laughs> okay. Focus. There we go. Wow. Okay. Hi. That's okay. <laughs> That's great. Uh yeah, you you are capped at momentum. Uh you know that at cruising speed, um uh at generally non like cloaking ships, uh at cruising speed, especially for the size of your ship, won't really notice anything. Um if you're going anything past your cruising speed, if you're going to max warp. Um, with a saber class, uh, even though it's a saber class and it has a smaller role or profile, there is a higher possibility of non Romulan ships detecting, being able to detect you easily. Um, Romulan ships, on the other hand, they know this technology. Um, BRB. Okay. Uh, you know that a cloaked sh ship for a Romulan, um, you know, you would actually know this because of your intelligence background. Um, other operations of this similar size, namely of the uh, def of the USS Defiant, which is on by Deep Space Nine, um, you know that they often need to slow down and go out of warp in order to avoid detection by uh, by Romulan or other cloaking vessels, just because they're looking for that and they have that technology. Okay, so we want to keep our our power signature as low as possible. Okay, so we'll stick at cruising for now. Uh, we can always pick up the pace if we detect anything. Well, there's no reason to wait to get underway. We can always have these com conversations on route if it's going to take us two days. Kelly, okay. you know, do me prep the tension for launch. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Pushes a bunch of buttons. Oh, we're in a conference <laughs> Those, no, we're in a conference those room. Those are some station. long arms. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We I, will find them. We will press I, them. For some reason, I thought we were still on a bridge. But, sorry. <laughs> no, not you. Um. All right. Is there any business that anybody has before we leave? I don't. Not me. No. Uh. Real quick. Uh. Because. Mm -hmm. I might be remembering episodes wrong from from DS9, but I thought the the cloaking device kind of made the atmosphere a little bit hot. Did it, or no? 
the atmosphere? I might be wrong. The internal the... systems of the ship? No, that's what the yeah. AC is for, buddy. Yeah. Mm. If they did mention that, it would have been in the first episode, and that's only because a Romulan had to run it, so she made it more comfortable for herself. Okay. O'Brien would have fucked, fucked that right out as soon as she left. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. It was, yeah. The. I, yeah, I actually do think the first episode of the Defiant, they had the Romulan sort of subcommander mm -hmm. with them. And because she's she was a dick, she brought up the <laughs> the base temperature up higher for her. <laughs> but yeah, then they then there's no other mention of it ever being hotter. Then again, no, there's hotter. no other mention of that character again either. No, because yeah, she was a Voyager. She uh played Wait. Yep, she, uh, she not the character, the actress. Okay, because I she, thought the character died. <laughs> yeah, nope, she, she just vanished into the ether. Yeah, the she actress got the, the wrong role that's role how they do. of the Bajoran uh, Kest not Kestra. What's her name? The oh, the Bajoran Cardassian. Yeah, her. So the oh, Romulan God. became a Seska. Yeah, the Romulan became a Cardassian. Became a Bajoran. Very quick. Yeah. It's something I really do like about Star Trek. They basically re reuse their their actors. <laughs> if yeah, you and get they, into Star yeah. Trek once, you're going to be in Star Trek twice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or if you look at the case of uh, the guy who played the Chief Borda in Jeffrey DS9. Coombs. Yeah, Jeffrey that guy, Coombs. That guy played everything and then oh, yeah. went on to play Andorians. And he played Shran, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a shame Wild. Enterprise got canceled. And uh, Shran was yeah. the main Brunt, character. I believe. Oh, yeah, he was Brunt as well. Oh, yeah, he was a good actor. The <laughs> Sorry. And the Nazi guy from the one uh, World War II episode of Voyager came back and played the Borg that they recovered. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So that was still I, to anyway. the, day, the best interaction between any two Star, uh, Star Trek characters is Miles O'Brien and that Cardassian that thought he was flirting with her. <laughs> wild anyways we're we're all very large fans of this series or else why would we be playing this uh, <laughs> i'm still so, waiting to get my lightsaber <laughs> okay um continuing on here yeah if if nobody has any other business on board ds42 um commander edwards you're making your way down the docking sort of panel and you see uh, Admiral Yannick uh, meets you and says, uh, Commander, hold one moment. Admiral? Commander, I wish you the deepest amount of luck on this mission. This... I feel... <laughs> I've picked the right man for the job, and I hope you have fun on your mission. At least try to. Your orders, once you arrive at whatever installation is there. Number one, determine if there is a changeling present or a dominion, pre dominion presence on board the station. And take whatever measures that you need to take in order to secure the Federation. I'm not going to overtly say that anything needs to happen physically to the Dominion presence there. Whether they are captured or whether they perish, I leave that up to you. This is an unsanctioned mission. Um, I hope you know that if you are discovered by the Romulan High Command, there is nothing that I can do for you or your crew. I hope I've made that clear. Yes, sir. Uh, is there anything that you want to tell me before you leave? Just be ready with the cavalry in case we come calling. Yes, the Guan, the Guan Yu, will be, will be near. However, we can't necessarily spare any other ships to assist. This is a dangerous mission. Your second piece of orders are to 
dismantle the station and destroy it. And or destroy it. Um, good luck and Godspeed. And the Admiral extends a hand towards you, Commander. They shake his hand. Okay. Admiral. Uh, uh, the Admiral nods and turns around and walks back into the station. Am I, I am anybody? back. Okay. Am I walking with anybody? Commander Edwards, you walk on board the bridge of an unfamiliar starship. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, you walk on board the bridge of the Saber class. Um, it is... Uh, sig- it's pretty different from the <laughs> from the Intrepid Bridge. Uh, chair in the middle, alone, uh, freestanding. The two consoles in front of you, one where Op sits and one where uh, Helm sits. Behind you are your engineering stations and your science stations. Uh, tactical is directly behind you, uh, sort of uh, akin to where Worf was standing. Um, on board the bridge. Um, everybody has a chair here. Uh, the stations all have chairs. Um, and you see there are some some uh, screens on the bridge that at one time were classified, but now that you have taken full command of the bridge, um, the, the screens all appear for you. Um, the... <laughs> Cloaking is controlled by the tactical station. That is my question. I know yeah. who we have for complement, minus tactical. We have our engineer, our con, doctor, science. Uh, I leave that up to you. Um, do You are more than welcome I, to take... I, I did have a thing I wanted to do um, prior to leaving. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance because I was away. Oh, no, that's okay. I was just going to say, yeah, I asked a couple of times, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, what, was your, what was your thing? Um, my only thing that I wanted to do was just send a quick, um, like, calendar reminder to um, Lieutenant Mitchell, just being, like, a week from when, at, you know, today, dinner date on a restaurant of her choosing in the, in the, on the station. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to roll a d20. <laughs> uh, you receive a response back. Oh my god, I thought... I, uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Yes, thank you for giving me the reminder. Um, okay, uh, are you... What are you going to be wearing? You, in that, you skip that in text form. <laughs> <laughs> Should I wear something? Should I wear my uniform? Should I dress up? <laughs> I'm going to immediately respond, well, I mean, it, if you don't want to wear anything, that's up to you, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm rolling a d20 at disadvantage now. Two. Uh, you do not receive another message. <laughs> Mitchell is spinning. I'll be wearing a black... I just send back, I'll be wearing a black dress. Uh, <laughs> I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna roll. You're not gonna generate momentum off this because I don't want you to. But roll insight medicine difficulty one. Unfair. <laughs> just roll two dice. Don't buy anything. This is just a fun thing. Just I just want to see. Yeah, you do get a from the other side of the station. You get a telepathic. <laughs> Grant, like, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and you can take that what you will. Um, okay, uh, back to Commander Edwards. Um, so before, uh, yeah. Detroit, how's her tactical yeah. scores? That's a really good question. Let me <laughs> hang on. Um, uh, she has, uh, security of four, control of 12. How's her daring and fitness? Her, her daring 
is nine. Her fitness is nine. And a useful focus is? You don't have to tell me what they are. Um, she will be a new... Well, okay. The <laughs> she has an NPC stat block right now, which means that I roll um, for her. Uh, she does have a tactical systems focus. Uh, she specializes in energy weaponry. Uh, not really a hand-to-hand -hand person, more of a shooty shoot. Okay, perfect. Lieutenant Commander Detroit. Want to take up tactical for me? Uh, the commander looks and, sa and says, Oh, are you normally the tactical officer on your vessel? Yes, I am. Ah, okay. Well, I would be happy to. Um, Commander, one thing that I do need... You see that she actually... There's little, like, tiny auxiliary seats next to you. Um, Commander, one thing I do want to make it clear uh, is where I am in the command stat... In the command ranking. Um, I know that you have officers where you are right now. I'm not sure where you stand on having a first officer. Um, I would certainly be able to fill that role for you, but I, you might you might want someone who knows your crew more than I do. Well, thank you for the offer, but I want you as disconnected as possible. You understand? You work in a different world than us, so I want you a tactical, and I want you doing all that smart little Romulan intelligence stuff you do. Uh, Sounds Commander good. Kelly's going to be my uh, XO for this, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, Detral stands up, um, gives a sideways glance to Commander Kelly, and then takes her place at tactical. Kelly just shrugs. Um, Gonna get you in a red shirt any day now, Kelly. Detral mm -hmm. looks at you and says, um, Commander Kelly, I'm not sure where where you've served, but normally you're not allowed to eat gummy bears on the bridge. Where did you get... Okay. Uh, and, okay. I've got a medical <laughs> excuse. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I need to get my blood sugar up. Oh, I actually didn't... Oh, well, you know what? I, I, okay. I will be over here. And <laughs> she goes... <laughs> Uh, uh, Nishizumi just like will just look at uh, uh, the troll and it, and don't say a word, but just kind of like get the get, show a sense of like like thank you for for asking her that. <laughs> like I I hundred percent agree with you that she really needs to be a bit more professional there, but <laughs> so she's not gonna say anything. Okay. <laughs> The board gave you type 1 diabetes? <laughs> no one has looked into that medical request. It's uh, that might get sent off to shit, my players say. <laughs> the board gave you type 1 diabetes. <laughs> well, um, system, if systems are checked and online, I'm sure you've been itching to take her out. Is that Nishizumi? Sorry, I just got a phone call. What exactly happened? <laughs> we found out that the board give type 1 diabetes. And <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> can, yeah, the commander just uh, had you uh, give the command to take it out. Yeah. To, okay. okay. Uh, Nishizumi, you, uh, your fingers, well, number one, the, the L-car setup is not standard. It is a little different. Uh, you see a different color scheme. Everything's it's much more monochromatic on this bridge. Uh, lots of dark, uh, actually like blacks, um, like different shades like gray and um, other things on this bridge. Um, it's much more of a muted console. But as soon as you touch the tiniest little control, you feel the, the ship immediately do what you want it to do. Um, this ship is smaller than, well, not smaller than you're used to, but 
Uh, it has a con of four. Uh, this thing can can do what it does, and it does its thing really well. Um, well, Nishizumi will just raise an eyebrow at 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 how odd how this console is a little different from what she's used to, but she would rather prefer being on a bigger ship. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nishizumi, you do 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 do. And, um, I will ask Commander Edwards, are you cloaking now or later? He will be... I, actually, I'll let you, uh, yeah, I'll let you. Yeah. Uh, so part of the plan is to, you know, not be caught, so. Assuming <laughs> that we're not being watched, we're cloaking as soon as possible. So, Kelly, okay. as soon as you think it's safe to do so, engage the cloak. So I'm away sir. from prying eyes. The ship. Uh, Are any prying eyes or prying eyes in general, sir? Let's go with any. Let's aye, aye, sir. Engaging that cloak. Um, as you engage the cloak, um, you, the system, uh, number one, the lights dim on the bridge, uh, Fairly significantly, it actually gets to be like sort of a dim light level in here. Um, you feel uh, a moment you hear power cylinders start, and um, you see that the um, on board all of your stations, you see hooking system activated in sort of block lettering. Um, uh, just to give everybody a refresher on the rules of cloaking, uh, your shields are down. Uh, you're what you cannot shoot from a cloak. Um, yeah, uh, that is your whole thing. It is a minor action to raise the shields um, for that, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, the shields disengages the cloak, correct? Like at the same time, you don't have to do two minors. Uh. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So raising, yeah, raising the shields automatically cuts the cloak off. Um. Uh. You actually do hear the a uh, familiar Romulan the wah, 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 noise as well. Um. I wish I could pull up a soundboard and play that sound, but I'm not gonna bug Kyle about it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You make your way towards uh, the target destination. Um, like I said, it is two days of travel time. Um, I'm going in that go time. Ahead. I do yeah. make sure that sick bay lights do not dim when the cloak engages because that would be very bad <laughs> if I was doing surgery or something. Um, yeah, you confirm. Uh, there are medical overrides and overrides in general for lighting level. Um, okay, good. The reason for... Well, I for think the lighting is just aesthetic, if nothing else. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, like, imagining yeah. the aesthetic of the sick bay lights dim. <laughs> Nurse, get me a headlamp. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so... Two days of downtime here. For, no, uh, travel time downtime. here for you. Travel time. Sorry. Yes. Two, two days um, of battle drills. Okay. Um, you said two days of battle drills, eh? Well, both to familiarize ourselves with the ship combat and uh, actual working to clear corridors and stuff. Now, unfortunately, we don't have A, schematics of the place, nor B, actually a holodeck to put said schematics, so we'll use our own corridors. Uh, just yeah, make sure everyone's tip-top, ship shape. I'm sure Kelly's got like a thousand systems to check, so... And I'm taking whatever medical team I have and running them through response time drills, uh, you know, triage, uh, rapid response, getting to where you need to go, how to crawl through the Jeffrey's tubes to get to the different decks, that kind of thing. I assumed we had these six people. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um, and what is our crew complement on this thing? <laughs> uh, that is a really good question. Let me find that up for you. Um, I think like 32. Not... Not that not that bad. Uh, so, standard complement is sixty five. Uh, the this is an intelligence variant of the saber class. Your crew complement is fifty. 
um, run uh, a lot of the systems here are streamlined um, and there is not a huge need for a large crew especially for a short term mission such as this um, uh, yeah so basically everybody has exactly what they need um, you all of course there are background characters and stuff like that but um, every department is right at the level to where you're like mm, we could probably use like three more people in every department on the ship um but we are able to manage the way that we Please. are right now what is it upper uh, uh the one thing i will point out uh about your um yeah so the medical the medicines rating is 2 uh your science rating is 1 um the <laughs> the science uh the sciences are not a you medical sense of, actually did not change from the guan yu same yeah. level same <laughs> level definitely uh you do not uh, the ship has normally you have an, a primary and auxiliary uh science station on the bridge there is one science station uh for the science officer um there of course, all all stations can be whatever you want them to be. It just is a simple override task, but there is one that is set aside for sign. Uh, well, that is designated for sign. It's not necessarily set aside, but um, yeah, uh, you have a blade of armor which mechanically increases your resistance slightly. Um, uh, yeah. Um, is there anything else? Pressing? The ablative armor, basically, in terms of de uh, calculating damage ups, our uh, class, like our, our size, mechanically. Not, so it increases your resistance. So your scale is the same. Your scale is three. So, uh, but your resistance uh, takes into account the fact that you have thicker armor that is able to, you know, um, take damage. And is able to actually degrade and sort of shift to where the uh, pressing need for it is. That's sort of what my knowledge of what a blade of armor is. Um, I, I, I blade of armor means that the... it it burns away instead of your ship burning away. Yeah, it, right. It directs the energy into the armor rather than into anything else. It, it basically diffuses the energy put into whatever is shot at you, so yep. that it's not all one piercing shot. Anyway, okay. um, what I mean is, is like we have the same resistance as a uh, scale four ship at that point with the blade of armor. Um, actually, uh, technically, you have a with no additional bonuses added on. You have the resistance, I believe, of, of a scale five ship. Correct. That's pretty. Yeah. It's, it's, so, wow, that's a lot. A little ship. Yeah. So that re that reduces your all your damage taken by five, meaning that in order to do a breach, they need to do ten damage or more. Um. So that Basically, yeah, one little space tank, and Nishizumi's having the time of her life flying in a straight line. Well, Nishizumi just said that she would rather be flying a bigger ship. I don't know. Trying to throw a bone. Because she's used to driving heavy tanks. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Um Yeah. Uh so people want to run drills. I will uh have Commander Edwards roll for um because even though you guys are running departmentally, I'm assuming Commander Edwards is spearheading this sort of mm -hmm. simulations and everything like that. So Edwards, go ahead and give me uh, a task, which I will tell you about what it is in a moment. And given the performance, Sersha actually wants to try at the helm. In simulation. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we can say uh, narratively that that happens. That everybody sort of sort of takes a turn and... Um, yeah. Familiarizes itself at the various systems, because who knows? <laughs> Sersha yeah, totally. sits down at the helm. Okay, who here knows what a split S is? <laughs> uh... So, yeah, uh, Commander Edwards, give me some sort of command. Yeah, give me 
Mm. Running simulations, making sure, yeah, I'm going to say either, yeah, hmm, I don't want to, let me look at the look here really quick. I wonder if there's a role that it says is an example for this. I'm kind of torn, actually. Um, One moment here. So, so hilariously, the term is command and control in the military. <laughs> of running the section yeah. and doing all that <laughs> it's like oh look at those nice convenient buttons okay yeah i'll yeah even though your control yeah i guess your control isn't the biggest fun but yeah go ahead and do control command um i would say um <clears throat> hmm give me a difficulty f uh this is over the span of two days uh give me a difficulty four control command this will uh bring about an advantage for you if, if you succeed, which will reduce the difficulty of certain roles. Starfleet Protocol? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. Okay. Let's go with the value of... Oh, but planning for something is technically an exit strategy. Yeah, mm. nah, I don't like it either. No. <laughs> well, in a site, time, and a place. Okay. You have two days of downtime instead of wasting it. We're going to use it. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, sure. Um. Yeah, go ahead and give me that control command difficulty. And I'm going to buy one with threat, two with momentum. One with threat, two with momentum, heard. should do it. Okay. I don't know if you have... You do not have bolt command. Okay. No. Um, yeah, that is... Uh, yeah, you, you generate one momentum. Uh, along the two days that you have, um, you sort of... You run drills with every sort of duty shift. Um... Everybody sort of gets an idea of the way that the ship works. Um, I don't believe anybody here has served on board a Sabre class, and they're pretty new. And the fact that this is an intelligence variant, you see that uh, Lieutenant Commander Detral uh, sort of gives some, without overstepping, gives some sort of like, well, so the way that this has worked is, this is the reason why this is like that, so this is why this needs to happen. Um, Any time she steps up to say anything, it's with open arms. Like, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Detral appreciates that you... you yeah, she's... <laughs> you get the feeling that she's been in ranked structures that are significantly more strict than you run. Um, but where... Like, and yeah, pe you're in the military. You know how interpersonal stuff can sometimes be an issue. Yeah. Um... But yeah, you keep yeah open arms. You're like, yes, please give me the information so I can run the ship better. She's like, yes, here's this, here's this. Like, oh yeah, if there's a Romulan board boarding party, they're gonna come in in this sort of sort of uh, uh, situation. Uh, so they might have melee weapons as well. People don't necessarily think of that. Um, yeah, and you you guys are led through some pretty comprehensive and actually pretty physically demanding um uh drills both stark uh space combat and uh uh boarding combat and interpersonal combat lots of time spent in the uh firing fire, uh, fire not firing chamber the firing range um interpersonal yeah. combat huh so we're going to be snarking back and forth then but uh <laughs> Whipping is Sorry, mandatory in all that. fights. <laughs> Today uh, we're talking Witty Comebacks 101, how to skewer your enemy without a blade. <laughs> yeah, give them that sassy repartee. Um, awesome. Yeah, you run that. I'm going to go ahead and roll... What advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat were you trained in? Me? Fencing. <laughs> <laughs> Fencing. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> oh yeah, but okay, I guess. Um, it's actually a pretty decent roll. Uh, your first day uh, is pretty uneventful. Um, you are not close to the Romulan neutral zone at this point. You know that pretty much as <laughs> your first day goes, you're just trying to get there. Um, you see a couple of traveling merchants along the same war planes as you. Um, they do not appear to notice you or anything like that. Um, let's move on to the second day. Man. Okay. Um, your second day, as you're approaching sort of Romulan territory, um, you notice there is a... You see, um, Commander Edwards, you're on the bridge. Um, somebody operating sensors. Yeah, Durat Hall looks looks at you and says, um, Commander, I'm picking up a Klingon, what appears to be some sort of cargo ship or transport coming up ahead. Knowledge. Uh, Make note of it and go around it. Okay. Give it a wide berth. Uh, What's yeah. its heading? Uh, yeah. Its heading is uh, to Klingon territory. Okay. Yeah. I assume that information was passed on you. I should have asked. <laughs> There's a Klingon ship heading directly at us, and it's following us whenever we move. See, that would be wow. Bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. So you make your way. That second day is filled with. Um, Commander Edwards, as you get closer and closer to the Romulan neutral zone, you're within 30 minutes before you reach the place where the line is. Um, you actually start to see the nebula in front of you. Again, uh, pink, purple hues. Um, you know this nebula to be... Um, uh yeah, just gas um left over. Um there um who whoever would be at the science station. Chief Thal. Okay. Let me take a look here. Um you see uh Chief Thal turn turns to you and says, Commander Edwards, we are approximately twenty eight minutes away from the Romulan neutral zone. The nebula in front of us appears to be um, made up of stellar matter and um, some. It appears Neon to be a stellar. And Argon? Mm -hmm. Yes, it appears to be some sort of stellar nursery. Um, the. <laughs> this, you see a bunch of different hues um, sort of in the nebula as it stresses ahead of you. Um, uh, Chief Tall continues. Um, yeah, there are some gravimetric distortions coming from this area. Um, I'm not detecting any vessels coming this close. Okay. Nishizumi, just take Go ahead. Uh, Take the information Thal's provided you and plot around those gravimetric distortions. The last thing we need is some, one of those knocking out the cloak. Understood. Uh, Lieutenant Nishizumi, go ahead and give me to plot around the uh, gravimetric uh, distortions. Please give me. Um, hmm. Uh, yep, that'll be Reason Con. Um, and for Tengen, it's the engines con assisting? Uh, that will be sensors. Uh, sensors con. Same reason number. Con? <laughs> reason con? May I ask why it's reason? Uh, you're planning the course. Okay. Alright. Uh, astronaut navigation or helm ops as focus? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, ready. I'll roll for Tengen. I'll 
spend one. Did I uh, did I declare a difficulty? You, you did not. Uh, yep. Sorry, that'll be difficulty two. Two. Okay. I will spend and one then. threat for bold. Okay. And go ahead and go. There you go. Okay. Uh, you are mm. captive momentum. Uh, yeah, you see. Um, in general, you've uh, the course that you've taken hasn't really necessarily been a beeline anyway. Um, the Shackleton Expanse is known for these sorts of anomalies. Um, they appear to be getting uh, denser and denser in number as you get closer to this um, to this nebula that you're approaching. Um, about uh, <laughs> Nishizumi, you see after 25 minutes that you are about to cross into the Romulan neutral zone. Uh, you see the computer, Nishizumi, actually warns you uh, uh, over the loudspeaker and says, um, warning, course, current course plotted is taking directly into Romulan neutral zone. Thank you, computer. We know. <laughs> um, acknowledged. Um, yeah. Don't, Do you, don't you have to enter command codes to plot that course? Maybe uh, we're in an intelligence ship. Yeah, true. Um, so this is a question for all of you. Your goal, well, I guess for the command, um, your goal is in front of you. There is a line drawn in the sand of the Romulan neutral zone. You are close to your goal. I do have to ask just for the record, do you or do you not wish to cross into the Romulan neutral zone? Okay. Uh, wait, wait, I'm, wait, I thought the mission was to cross it. The mission yeah. is to cross it. I'm asking you as a GM if you intend on crossing it. So here's now that we're here. Here's what's gonna happen. Open the shipwide hail. Uh, shipwide communication. Do do channel open. This is Commander Edwards. We are about to cross over into the Romulan neutral zone. We're not turning back. Now is your chance to note any objections in your log. Uh, so, so basically, in other words, out of character. So basically, in other words, the commander Edwards just going to be basically saying this is this is going to be a fighting ship. I intend to go into harm's way. Anyone doesn't want to come along, had better get off right now. Uh, no, so it, that would have happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, people would have opted this, out. This, yes, this is more. Um, if you have moral objections to what is about to happen, this will fall on me. If you note in your log that you make an objection. I'm taking responsibility for everything moving forward. So if we're caught or captured, it falls on me. I'm giving everyone a chance, not an out, but a you're following orders. Got it. You all worked hard. You're all the best at what you do. Let's get it done and get home. Okay. Nishizumi, as you push the commands on your console, um, you see, you literally, on your charts, you see the line, and you cross it. Uh, Commander Edwards, what is the ship's alert status at this point? Yellow alert. Okay. Uh, do we... Uh, uh, sort of dull... Well, yellow alert without the shields going up automatically. <laughs> I'm gonna make that one very clear. I, I was about to say. <laughs> uh, yellow alert. Okay. Uh, you see, um, diagno automatic diagnosis get done on of every system. Um, you uh, are at the boundary of the nebula. When uh, does somebody want to take control of Durathal's, Um I got it. I think I'm the only one who okay. does have it. Okay. As we cross uh, the neutral zone, here eventually. Yeah. As we cross the neutral zone, Edward's just going to get up out of his chair, walk over to Kelly, and take some whatever she's snacking on. M and M's, peanut M and M's, peanut M and M's this time. I'm just going to steal some. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead and give me reason science. Uh, difficulty science. of one. And this is scanning, obviously. Uh, yep. Sensor ops and stellar cartography apply. Absolutely, and that is difficulty of two reduced to one. Actually, no, 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 it isn't on you. Ah, yes, that is difficulty two. Okay. Uh, uh, assisted by the ship's sensors, science. I'm going to buy two with momentum. Okay. Two dice with oh yeah, so three momentum in total. Okay. And rerolling the eighteen with her cautious science. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Oh no. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Great. Um by the ship. What was that? Sorry, what? Assisted by the ship? Yeah, the ship uh assists with uh sensor science. Somebody wanna grab that? The doctor's Oh yeah, I got it. Sensors. You're not gonna like what you see. I... Nope, I don't. I really don't. We just wanna re oh. <laughs> I'm gonna spend two momentum to quash that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh <laughs> Uh, awesome. Uh, Duratol, uh, looks up and says, Commander, there's a uncloaked Romulan to Duradex class starship coming out of the nebula. Okay. And <laughs> as you say that, um, on the view screen, you see a hulking green Romulan warbird. Come, sort of come out of the nebula. Um, and prepared for all things. Okay, what do you do? Nishizumi, go around it or under it. Uh, Nishizumi will, will try to sneak. Oh, okay. Uh, I know it's not. I know it just popped out, but any chance you could backplot where it came from, based on momentum and he heading. Is anyone else a little concerned that they're operating this brazenly? It's the Romulans, so no. They're they're within a nebula. It's, if we were outside of the nebula, we would never see the ship. Mm. That doesn't um, sit well with me. Okay, uh, Lieutenant Nishizumi, uh, go. You are attempting to move stealthily. Um. Uh. Yes. Okay. Uh. Go ahead and give me control con. Difficulty of two. Yep. Uh. Assisted by engines con. All right. Helm up. Yeah. All right. Let's focus. Okay. Uh. I am going to be spending. To increase the comp range to three, uh, excuse me, to four. Four. Ouch. Um, okay. Well, you got two We're successes off the bat, so. Yeah. We're using their technology to sneak past them. And as he sorts out his rolls. So... All right. Oh, go ahead. Um, for, should I get that reroll? That bold? Should I use that bold? Uh huh. One threat and buy the rest of the dice with momentum. But the difficulty is two. Mm hmm. You want to buy four or five dice when, there's the, when the difficulty is two? I, actually, you're right. Just get the <laughs> one. Get the one with the all right. one. Yeah, all right. So I'll jam, I'll give you one threat because okay. GMs need to have some fun sometimes. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, three dice for me. And go ahead and change the comp range. And go ahead, fingers crossed. 
Uh, it's a good thing I took roll. that re roll. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's why we take those talents, y'all. Okay. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Nishizumi, as you begin to maneuver the ship down, you feel a... Well, you see on your proximity sensors that there is a gravimetric force, a shear that kind of hits your ship momentarily. As you are just about to lose control, you... Uh, the ship sort of shakes just a, just slightly as the inertial dampeners uh, um, adjust. And you... you um, are you going around the uh, ship or under the, 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 the ship? Nishizumi, she better be going right through that gap. <laughs> uh, Don't go through the gap. Uh, no, 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 no. That that gap is not big enough for for a saber to go through. Probably, <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah, right. But let's not. Yeah, it is. But no. Yeah. It uh, might. Jared, if I might make a suggestion. Wide. If I might make a suggestion, Captain. Go ahead. We remain motionless and let them pass us by. Plan minimizes the odds of detection. Yeah, I'd Nishizumi. say that's not a bad, a yeah, bad Nishizumi idea. Nishizumi, cut engines and just let momentum. Uh, actually, it's full stop. Then, yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we take down? Should we? Should we? Should we minimize the power a bit? Yeah. Full stop. Minimize power, but let them float on by. And okay. To address your concern, Kelly. Yep, they're actually. To be clear, are you usually. saying are you saying come to a full stop? Or are you saying just cut the engines and let us glide? Depends on if letting us glide would still show up on their sensors. If stopping is the better choice than that, or gliding. Stopping means we'd have to cancel our forward momentum, which would be a burst of impulse. Yeah. Yeah, just cut the engines and let it glide. Okay. And I... and then reduce the power to bare minimum. Let them float on by. Okay. Uh, Nishizumi, you uh, cut the engines. Uh, you feel the inertial dampeners uh, um, don't release, but you sort of feel the ship careen as the ship um, begins to sort of go along its own uh, velocity. Uh, to reduce power output, uh, Commander Kelly, give me control engineering. Uh, uh, I'll do uh, difficulty is your scale three. Okay, control engineering. I will go ahead and buy a dice with threat. Okay, don't fuck this up, Kelly. <laughs> uh, the ship will be the time. ship will be assisting the with Isaac Newton is the deadliest son of a bitch in space. <laughs> uh, the ship will assist by uh, with engines. Uh, with structure. Hang on, one second. Structure? No, no, no. That doesn't sound sound uh, right. Engines engineering. Yep. I have a question. Yeah. We are trying to remain as undetected as possible. Mm hmm. Electronic warfare focus. <sighs> Active no. sensor jamming in a nebula. If you're trying to actively jam sensors, I would say so. I. You're not going it so far as that. You're just trying to look like a rock, a cloaked rock in space. I'd have to say no. Okay, worth asking. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally worth asking. I'll re-roll that 20. Um, that is a failure. And that this is why I say don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any talent or medals that can help you there? Um, let's see. A uh, determination. Who else has the star cross? I have one. Didn't want to use it this early. I think this is the time. Mission's about to end abruptly, so, uh... 
<laughs> um, you you are allowed to uh, use a determination towards a value to re-roll the full dice pool if you'd like. Or any dice in the dice pool. Okay. If you use the star cross, that three and that ten become critical successes. Yeah, I know. Um, just uh, not to be a bummer, but star cross needs to be declared before the ten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will cite my value of who dares wins. What we are doing is incredibly daring, not to mention kind of illegal. The most illegal. Surely. And we are attempting to to uh, coast right by a Romulan warship using Romulan technology that they might be on the lookout for. Yeah, I'd take it. Okay, so I will re-roll that 16. Like for dares. And the 20, right? I already yeah. re-rolled the 20. Oh, okay. Yes! Mm. Okay. That is your three successes. Um, uh, you all hear... Um, well, number your Actually, the lights do fully... Uh, mm, that's for color, but... Um, they do dim more. And your uh, consoles all dim. Um, uh, Commander Kelly... In order to sufficiently look like a rock, um, you turn off every system except for the ones needed to move around the ship and to breathe. Um, yeah, you are a floating rock in space. There is going to be a roll coming from the ship. One moment, please. Kelly, as you cut all the power and the lights flicker again, you just hear Hagen yell down the hall, God damn, I just fixed these. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, is there any kind of increased difficulty because they're doing it through a nebula? Um, the, yeah. Uh, this, for me, uh, a base difficulty, if you didn't have the technology for cloaking is four to, to look through it. They have the technology, so that reduces the difficulty by one to three. You are cloaked. Yeah, so you're, you are um, you are both drifting and you are both, and you um, yeah, you're drifting and your power signature is very low. Uh, so that increases the difficulty, uh, I'm going to say um, by your scale additional three, so they have a difficulty six roll. Um, one moment, please. Drum roll, please. I do not have a drum roll ready. Okay. Um, they are what kind of crew again? Sorry, just one moment, everyone. We are a Novus crew with absolutely have no idea how to use the weapons or engines. Ah, perfect. <laughs> so, us. <laughs> <laughs> they are an exceptional crew. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend as much threat as I need to. I'm going to spend six, four, five dice. You gotta take away your permissions to spend threat. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> uh, okay. That is 5d20. For everybody's information, my target number on this is... Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 10 and a 3, so that's 13. Um, one, two, three. The ship also assists. Like, I truly With... feel on the edge of my seat right now. Just watching the <laughs> <laughs> Science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
difficulty one. Okay. You float by. Everybody is almost staying still and you can hear a pin drop on the bridge. The Romulan ship Kareen, so not doesn't Kareen, sort of turns to the right and heads off in the other direction. Not back into the nebula, but sort of going uh, away from you along the border of the nebula. You see Wait. the... So is it heading into Federation space, or... No, just it's along... heading deeper into Robin. Yep, inside, oh, okay. inside the neutral zone. Yep. Okay. So you're um, uh, heading deeper into the neutral zone, not the way you came. Um, you guys see the ascend of a scale 6 to Deerdex going the other direction. Okay. After, <laughs> yeah, Edwards. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, Commander Kelly, do you raise power to the Give standard levels? Minutes. Okay. I'm uh, not so close. Yeah. Give it a few minutes, and then we'll continue on our way. Uh, gradually increase power. Just don't turn all the lights on at once, Kelly. Okay. The the Deerdex continues. Gets smaller and smaller. Kelly, you do do turn on your secondary systems. The lights go back up to their original dim. The <laughs> you use the um Nishizumi, you write your pitch and your yaw to where you're now level with the plane, I guess. Um, you're not upside down or anything. That's great, and you are still sitting on the bound on the border of the nebula. What does the crew of the Tenjin do now? Take us in, Nishizumi. Roger that. Okay, uh, Nishizumi, uh, to successfully navigate inside of a nebula. Please uh, give me control con. Uh, difficult. Uh, yeah. You're, so um, actually, before Astrogate you do that, the shit out of that nebula. Um, before you do that, actually, as you begin to enter into the nebula, um, Commander Kelly, give me a. Hmm, one moment. Commander Kelly, give me a hmm, reason engineering. Actually, uh, no, this is insight. Uh, insight engineering difficulty of two. Uh, any applicable focuses? Uh, your focus and cloaking devices will do it. Okay. I'll go ahead and give you another threat. I think I know where this is going. I'll give you give me one threat, okay? Are you trying to figure out if the cloaking device? We'll re-roll the thirteen. Okay. Sorry, that was control engineering. I'm sorry. Let me re-roll that. Focus used, go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will re-roll the 16. Okay. There we go. Five successes. Okay, and I deleted the wrong one, but everything is okay. Uh, five successes on a difficulty of two that generates you two float floating momentum and one banked. Um, you, as you sort of play back the events that just happened, you're wondering, why would a Romulan vessel with 
cloak. I mean, it's a Romulan ship that has a cloaking device. Why would it be uncloaked? I was actually going, going to answer that. <laughs> I brought that up earlier, operating yeah. very brazenly. Yeah, and I was actually going to answer that once uh, we got back underway. <laughs> but, uh, DM, theory. continue. Sorry. Maybe uh, they're just thinking, well, we're in friendly space. What could possibly go wrong? They're not <laughs> in friendly space. They're in the neutral zone. Oh, they're not, thought... they're not supposed to be here. Right, okay. <laughs> no okay. Okay. Here. I thought that they were they they were in in Romulan space. Sorry, no <laughs> confused. Um, you as Nishizumi starts to make preparations to enter the nebula, you begin to think that this nebula might have a not good effect on your cloaking systems. Captain uh, Herkman, we hold here. I'll stop. What's up? Get me an analysis of that nebula. Maybe that warbird came out of that nebula uncloaked because it couldn't cloak. It's a different take than I was having, but Chief Thaw, what do you got for us? Uh, that's a really good question. Go ahead and give me reason. Yeah. Um, reason science. Uh, difficulty. Um, by sensor science on the ship. Absolutely. Uh, difficulty of three. Okay. Uh, by one with threat, the second with momentum. Are you kidding me? Watch that. <laughs> Ouch. Dang. Come yeah. on, Tangent. <laughs> Sighting focuses in either sensor ops or stellar cartography. Uh, stellar cartography, yep. That is uh, okay. Um, difficulty of three. That's five successes. You are capped at six. You said you would like to spend the quash. Yes. Okay. Down to four momentum. Uh, Chief Fall looks up and says, "Yeah, it appears to be a pretty thick nebula. Um, probably del deleterious to the cloak." Um. Most likely will shield tactical screenings, making shooting pretty difficult. Will not damage us as long as we have our shields. Okay. Are Good there any Billy. eddies or currents in that nebula? Uh, you can spend one momentum for an obtained information. I, I like believe uh, Dura can do that for science. free. For free. Yeah. yeah, as a science officer. Okay, uh, there, yeah, there do, there do appear to be, um, eddies of a grav of a gravimetric nature, um, that create swirling patterns of, of gas, um, that, you, um, you see, uh, on the scans, it gets more intense the deeper that you go into the nebula, um, yeah, there are eddies and currents inside. You and we can... plot a course writing these to the installation. Uh, that would be a hell of an ask. <laughs> well, we've we got a hell of a pilot. Is. We don't know where the installation is. Might be better to be an unassuming floating rock while we try to find it. Exactly. Okay. Um, Seeing as we can't cloak, the Eddies might confuse anything that tries to scan. I like it. Okay. Of course you do. It's a challenge. So what are we doing, guys? Nishizumi. How are you at surfing? I've never surfed before. First Good time to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you guys cut. You guys cut each other off. <laughs> Same vibe, <laughs> though. <laughs> Nishizumi looks at them rather annoyed. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, your plan is to surf the eddies? While we attempt to locate the uh, installation. Yeah, we're going to try to look now, as much like a piece of stellar debris as possible. Now, the installation should be a away from these eddies, so it also should keep us away from any floating patrols. Uh, Might I suggest have... something? Ed? While we're scanning, we keep an eye out for unusual displacements in the uh, nebulous composition. Uh, look for wakes, basically. Because a nebula this dense, a ship's going to leave a wake behind. And the installation is going to do the same thing. Potentially. Chief Thaw? Pockets of different density. Yeah. That most certainly. Um, spend momentum for obtain information. I can give you more. Spend it. Uh, there are... You do see that there are localized pockets of... Um, minimal... Hmm. There appear to be perturbations in the currents. There are wakes, as you describe, and there are areas where there seems to be, instead of volatile motion, there seems to be linear motion. You know what I mean? Um, motion that is not being caused by the gravimetric distortions. Um, I will t- <laughs> I'll even tell you this. Uh, directly off your starboard side, there, if you go into the nebula a little bit, there is a large one of these eddies that swirls through the center of the nebula. Um, it is filled with, uh, with debris, and it is also, I mean, it's a rather volatile place to be in. There are gravimetric distortions in there. Um, this nebula, for I mean, good reason, has never been charted. It's in the it's in the neutral zone. So you going in there is a gamble. Um, so that's all I will say. Yeah, Captain, I have an idea. Let's hear it. I'm assuming it's going to have to do with that space tornado of debris. It doesn't, actually. This nebula is kind of a noisy place. I might be able to disguise our sensor sweeps as ambient radiation. If we can't cloak the ship, we can at least cloak our intentions. Exactly. If we look like a chunk of rock that isn't actively trying to scan everything nearby, that's a little less suspicious. Make it happen. Aye, aye. Okay. Uh, you're, so you're going to scan the nebula from the outside? Uh, no, she's going to reconfigure the ship's sensors. So that, uh, you know how you can detect incoming radar waves? Yeah. She wants to make the ship's scanning signature, basically its sweeps, not look like sensor sweeps, but by but like bursts of background radiation. Hmm. I like it. Okay. Um. They would have to be, um, it would have to be on a specific frequency of either gamma or X-ray radiation because anything else wouldn't actually be present in a nebula. Welcome to the wonderful world of electronic warfare focus. <laughs> yeah. Uh go ahead and give me um for doing for making those modifications. Uh there are primary modifications that you need to do to the sensor array in order to align it like this. Um you need to do some finicking with the primary sensor array. This will take time. Uh by your estimate, this will take an hour and a half to do the prep 
to do the necessary adjustments to the sensor grid. Your call, Captain. An hour and a half isn't going to change anything, but us getting blown out of the water the moment we enter this thing will. Take the time. Understood. I'll get to work. Okay. Uh, give me, for making these, it's going to be... Hmm. And during this time, you should zoom me back us off so we can react to any emerging ships. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me, uh, Commander Kelly, go ahead and give me control engineering. I will say that if you would like to do it faster, I'll allow daring. Uh, but it would be at complication increase. Hmm. I'll go with the daring. Okay. Uh, comp range, the base now, it now is two. This will be daring engineering, difficulty of four. Uh, comp range, base two, but I'm going to spend it three, four. Okay. So the four comp, four. Who... Minds if I say spend two momentum for a fourth die. Spend it. Please do. All right, so I am spending, or I'm giving you one threat and spending two momentum. Okay. To get a total of four die. With my focus in electronic warfare. Mm -hmm. And the complication range is four, right? Correct. All right, here we fucking go. I'm re-rolling that 20. Okay. Coward. <laughs> well, I have to get a success on it, otherwise we don't succeed, I, I think. Oh, please. Yes! There we go. Uh, you generate one momentum. Uh, it takes about half time. Uh, <laughs> common for engineers... Yeah, I'll quote an hour and a half, but we're done. You're done in less than an hour, uh, around fifty-five minutes. Um, the necessary preparations are made for this sensor grid. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, for that, so. <laughs> what can I say? I'm magical. So, uh, while that's happening, seems to have a bit of downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, once the Shizumi backs us off to a safe distance, I want her to not just plot, like, try to, obviously we can't penetrate the nebula too much, but try to run some simulations on what's going to happen if we do actually try to ride those eddies. Because if we just jump into one and get the ship destroyed, then we don't want that. We got a bit of time to kill. Let's get all our ducks in a row. Okay. Uh, are you going to be running these simulations on the computer, or somebody else? She is. So, oh, she's, she's, she's okay. flying, so she'll okay, cool. know best. Uh, yeah, uh, Nishizumi, is that uh, is that something you want to do? Hello. I didn't realize it was a want, but. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm making sure. <laughs> so while we wait for Nishizumi to come back. Okay. So when, when that thing. Oh, came, sorry. I'm back. Oh. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> What's up? Sorry. Uh, we have an hour and a half to kill, as far as we know. So once you back us off to a safe distance while Kelly does her work, I want you not plotting the eddies, but running some simulations of what's going to happen to the ship when we do. If we jump into that thing and instantly get destroyed, then that's not going to be a good thing. So get, let's get our ducks in a row. Okay. So we want to run like a quick simulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based on the data that Durathal's picking up. All right. Okay. Uh, for these simulations, it's going to be another reason con. Uh, for the uh, yeah, because you're using computer systems along with your ship systems, and I will allow an assist uh, with uh, reason science for Durathal. Um, this will be difficulty three. 
reason con uh, difficulty three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you get an assist from uh, both Durathal and the ship's uh, computers con. Doc, do you want to grab the computer? Will you take Astro Navigation or Helm Ops as a focus? Astro Navigation. Yep. Okay. And uh, and I will go ahead and give you bold. So okay. One threat. Shoot. Okay. Fingers crossed. Oh, nice roll. For you. And the <laughs> ship. Uh, did one of those fail? Uh, Can't no. remember. Uh, no, one I mean... of them was a 14. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, should I so go ahead and re-roll that? Should Let's I go ahead and re -roll that? Let's see what the ship does first. Okay. Uh, it's computer science. Well, computer con. Again. Yep, I was. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought the doctor was doing that. Sorry, I, I got it. I got it. That's my bad. The doctor's finally spending his arc, so. Again! Watch that. Wow. Can I uh, re-roll that just one more time to see if that, if that happens? What are the odds of that happening? One in 20. <laughs> it, but three but times in a row? There one we go. in. All right, well, uh, let me go ahead and re-roll my 14. Okay. Uh, I'll just go and do this. This is just simulation. Oh, it's so easy. 20. There you go. Okay. Four just, to get, just to get a little bit of momentum, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that gives you one additional success. Are we quashing that competition? It's a simulation, but that simulation could, yeah, quash it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Nishizumi, as you sort of look at this, um, you see that there is, as Durathal sort of helping you, there's a pretty big network of these sort of currents through here, um, varying in speeds. Um, the early simulations fail outright because the ship just gets pummeled by these gravimetric distortions that do move. I mean, they're not they're not static things; they do move. Um, so as this as the computer begins to calculate, okay, I need to uh, hit this thruster at this point. Uh, you uh, realize that you could probably pilot this. Um, if you weren't here, the computer would need to take control of help. Um, it would. It is exceedingly difficult to search for these gravimetric eddies. The ship, even in the best simulations, gets damaged. Um, and you actually do see through these uh, simulations that there is, there does appear to be a nexus of sort of, a, not, not where everything converges, but a large portion of these do head to this large gravimetric distortion in the middle. Um, where you, the sensors do pick up a slight, uh, some debris uh, inside of there. Um, uh, you see, yeah, debris, other metals, um, other like space dust that gets caught, caught in there and stuff like that. Um, so the simulations show you that you need to not go there because it's a whirlwind of just tiny little things that pelt your ship with debris and then you get eviscerated basically um so knowing when to get out of these eddies is really important too um that's basically what you learn from the simulations um okay. so basically the tension's absolute awful ship and it has to have a human to or <laughs> any live organic person to actually tell it where to go. <laughs> it's actually not what I said, but uh, I'm just saying, you, you are a, I don't think that was even implied. Yeah. It was either <laughs> the quantum computer or you and or no one else. Like 
it was a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm really confused as to where you guys had influence, but uh, yeah. So I, I was giving you a compliment because you're a good pilot, and then the computer can also do stuff if you're not there, but it would require giving helm control to the computer. Um, that's what, basically what you learn from the simulations. Uh, Commander Edwards, as this is happening, you get a notification that the sensors are uh, aligned to where the um, sensor pulses from your main sensor array um, are uh, hidden mm-hmm. as best as they can be. Edwards to Kelly. Kelly here. Hour and a half, eh? You skip lunch? Uh, I'm just magical. Very well. See you back on the bridge. All right, sir. And after two seconds, Kelly walks into the bridge. (laughs) You just (laughs) waiting. Um. Okay. Kelly exists in extra dimensional spaces. Yeah. Is there? uh, (laughs) Is there anything else? I don't think there is anything else we could possibly do. Uh, now that we know that the nebula is messing with them, I liked my idea of them actively not cloaking to get caught and start the war, but you know, science, I guess. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> no, Edwards had a very tactical version of why this was happening, and everyone's like, no, science and math. Like, fine, science and math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, batten down the hatches and take us in. Okay. Uh, so are you intending on surfing the eddies, or are you just going into the nebula? I like the surf the eddies idea. It allows okay. us to float around, allows us to kind of map it naturally. We'll eventually find the place this way, as long as we don't end up in that torrent of death. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> but the eddies should also keep us away from patrols. Okay. Um, well, uh, Lieutenant Ishizumi, uh, you see the entrance to a gravimetric current in front of you. Uh, do you take the ship in? Um, yeah, that was my orders, right? Yep. Take it in. No. Yeah. No, nah, she takes it in. Okay. Uh, this is going to be, um, as soon as you cross the threshold, number one, your cloak drops. Uh, uh, you're not quite to the eddy yet, but you are sitting in um, uncloaked. Um, Edwards, do you want shields up? If the cloak is down, the shields are up. Okay. What is our alert and status at this time? Stays yellow. I, just as a, a note, uh, Dr. Hagen will be on the bridge just so that she can try and use her, you know, telepathic and empathic abilities to see if she can find anything. If there's okay. not a chair for you, I will offer my chair. There is a chair for her. Okay. Enjoy your chair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, can I make a roll? Uh, not now. You're going to see if your ship blows up. Um, Lieutenant Nishizumi, give, please give me a Daring Con? Uh, <laughs> uh, Daring Con, Diff 5 to surf. To Difficulty you. 5? Th- this is dangerous, what you're doing. Oh, heavens. Uh, <laughs> to quote you, diff- don't fuck it up. Uh, yeah. Diff 5, and I'm spending... If you okay. got it, spend okay. it. I got it. Uh, I'm going to spend one of my banked milestones to refill my determination. I'm going to use my commanding officer to give her that determination for the role because she's following my orders. I already okay. have a determination. Yeah, but now, now that one stays in your pool for you to spend. Okay. And you have so to now you have two for this. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, great. Uh, uh, that is, um, it is now diff five comp four. Okay. Well, I don't have the site of value for this, right? Nope. 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 You okay. just have one. Good, because I was not going to... In fact, she refuses to cite I fight for my captain and my crew because she does not like the current captain. (laughs) That's fair. 
<laughs> wild. As long as you follow your orders, you don't have just, to like me. Just, just wild. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that's uh, right. Okay. So, um, uh, so with the determination, I automatically, I, I, I automatically get two successes, right? Yep. Correct. And just as long as you check the box in your perform task, uh, to get your, it's, it'll give you automatically a third dice that is rolled a crit. Okay. All right. So, then. and yeah. the maximum number of dice I can roll with the determination again was three. Four. four. Four plus your determination. So, okay, so was... four. You have to buy up to five and then roll four, if you want five dice. So oh. you buy up, but you only bring the slider to one below what you're buying to, because the determination is just going to be automatically added as a die. So yep. So five. you just do, yeah, you do. Uh, it would if you wanted to roll uh, roll uh, five dice in total, including your determination, it would be three crap. Um, so. So your difficulty's five. I'll give you a threat for bold, first of all. Definitely to get, give you that. Um, and then for the rest of the dice, what do you think? You guys think I should just roll with what I got? The three dice, or go with the four? Three dice for the success of five? If you, if you got it, spend it. Yeah, spend it on threat, because if you get a single floating momentum, then we can spend two to quash if needed. Leave that okay. one in the pool. Okay, so I'll give you some threat for four of them. Okay. Okay. Four dice plus your determination. All right, well, if uh, we die. Comp rank, the, your comp is four. Oh, four. Oh, jeez, okay. Yep. Well, Remember, fingers you crossed. spend your determination to re-roll dice. That's another reason I wanted, didn't want to take it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Ah, like that example. Hey, but we uh, succeeded. But <laughs> I will re-roll one of those comps. I again, then we and if you spend your determination, you can re-roll both of them. Uh, but we can just squash the other, right? You don't have the momentum to squash it. Oh, fudge! All right, blast it! All right, uh. I don't want to use my determination yet. So early in the game. Uh, I think this is the time to use it. All right, then. Yeah. Just hope oh, I get mine back to role play. I will use my determination, then. Uh, I accept nothing less than success. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and uh, you're re-rolling the two comps? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, quick question. When I'm re-rolling this, do I just select focus and determination as well? Not determination. No. Just, no. just the focus, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> two, four, six. So, yeah, it's eight on a define. Okay. Uh, you generate three momentum. Uh, <laughs> Michizumi, you, you're, the ship is hit with an intense gravimetric shear. Um, it takes a second for the inertial diameters to actually uh, compensate. You, everybody lurches to the right, <clears throat> um, almost falls out of their chairs as <sighs> they are pulled at impulse speed. By these, <laughs> by these uh, gravi gravimetric, you guys are going at about three quarters impulse in here, where usually you'd be going on thrusters. It's quick. Uh, you are <laughs> being whipped. You see, Mitsuzumi, your hands play across the controls, and you see routes that you could be going that would lead to certain death. You immediately avoid those. Uh, you find that you almost go down a, a gravimetric sinkhole. That would compress you and your ship to a tiny little cube. You just barely oh, uh, move out of the way, and you f get to a current that leads you deeper and deeper into the nebula. Uh, Dr. Hagen, you said that you were uh, watching out for telepathic stuff, right? 
Yes, I'm trying to with whatever range I have to see if I can sense a large concentration of Romulans. Okay. Uh, large concentrations of Romulans is what you're specifically looking for? Okay. Uh, insight medicine? I'm gonna do it again for the difficulty. Dis- yeah, you're <laughs> you're currently being jostled around in a cockpit in a bridge of a ship, looking for con- <laughs> looking for groups of Romulans in a nebula. Looking yeah, we'll say of Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, uh, I'm gonna put it at this four. Okie doke. Um. Anyone mind if I spend three momentum to get two dice? Go for it. Uh, telepathic prowess as the focus? Yeah, I'd say so. Nice. Insight medicine, you said? Insight medicine. Uh... Oh. Yeah, yeah uh, let's do it. Okay. That'll do. <laughs> I. Don't understand how you guys keep rolling so well. Okay, wrong <laughs> assist that way. <laughs> wow, I can see the <laughs> I can see the Statue of Liberty from here. I see all. Yeah, you get your momentum back. Um, <laughs> wild, just wild. Uh, yeah, you um, you're getting jostled. You ground yourself. Uh, you feel. A, you feel two things. You feel a concentration of a large concentration, a very large concentration of Romulans uh, behind you and to your mm-hmm. left at pretty distant range. You find a, another collection of humanoids, um, a smaller connect collection, much smaller by comparison. Uh, directly ahead, um, I. You can ask questions for obtain information if you want. Do I sense mostly Romulans? And the other thing that I'm sensing, have I ever sensed it before? Uh, that's two questions. Um, uh, <laughs> The you're talking specifically about the second thing I mentioned, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, to answer your first question, you are sensing primarily primarily a Romulan presence. Yes. Okay. There are other humanoids present, but it is pre- predominantly Romulan. I believe that I have a heading, and I rattle it off to uh, Nishizumi. Nishizumi, you hear a heading that takes you further down this. Uh, Eddie, but you see on your sort of map as you're looking down and up at the same time, um, you see your current your current that you're on right now, your current current <laughs> uh, veers to the right in <laughs> pretty shortly. But what you actually need to do is punch forward through it to get out of the uh, of the eddy. Um, yeah, you're heading for that. Um, go ahead. In order to shelter the, the, in order to get it out of the uh, uh, thing safely, give me um, control con this time. Control con. Mm-hmm. Yep. Con. Uh, this will be difficulty of. Yeah, you got in okay. I'll say difficulty of two to get out. Because right. basically, you're just maintaining your heading and. Pushing the engine so you get out. And the ship should have helped back then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the ship helps with engine con. And, uh, nope, it's going to assist with structure con here. Uh, because you're trying to hold together. All right, then. Um, okay, I'll give you one threat for bold. Cool. Okay, and. Awesome. Okay. Wild. Okay. When on the ship assist structure, uh, yeah. Cool. That is four and a two. Um, yeah, you are able to, 
uh, punch through the barrier of the uh, gravimetric eddy. Um, Durathal, could you make a reason? Uh, yeah, give me a reason science. Uh, uh, sensory ops, I assume? Yep. Uh, diff, again, diff two. Uh, buy with momentum. Okay. Buy one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, just one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You all see it uh, in front of you, and Durathal starts rattling off some stuff, but in front of you, you see a massive sensor um uh you see sort of arms extending out with um panels facing in one direction and that direction is towards the shack of expanse um it appears to be an amalgamation durathal looks down at her sensors and says this is actively searching through Federation territory in the Shackleton Expanse. Um, it's it's pretty large. Um, uh, Dr. Hagen, you sense a telepathic presence of humanoids. Um, mm -hmm. You see uh, on screen there, you see the two arms extending out, and in the center there appears to be a, cir uh, a spherical uh, chamber. Um, you sense that there are humanoids in there. There's a main room. It it, it appears to be occupied. It's a large circular chamber. Um, there's something else, but I I I don't I don't recognize them. I have a question. Okay. Oh, this is in character. Yeah. This right. looks to be our mission objective, right? Large Romulan built uh, thing inside the uh, expanse, yeah. Not the expanse. All right. So what's to stop us dropping a couple of photon torpedoes and leaving? Well, on top of the loss of life, the possibility of the First Minister's family is being held here. We need to confirm Dominion involvement or just Romulan subterfuge. Understood. Um, Commander Edwards, what's your alert status right now? A little yellow. You're at yellow alert right now? We're not under active attack. Okay. Everyone's just at wondering. battle stations at the yellow alert, so like, it's just, you know. Red alert's for when we're in active combat, I think. Yeah, red alert's when you're actively, we're gonna die one way or another, whereas yellow alert is, we could die any moment now, be ready. <laughs> Okay. Um, because otherwise, just everyone's just going about their business. Uh, <laughs> uh, Commander Edwards, you receive a hail. You see uh, Commander Detrol look up and say, Commander, we're being hailed by the station. Do we respond? I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Well, with sensor arrays that large. Yeah. All right. Uh, don't respond. Uh, yes, sir. Um, and you don't hear anything. Uh, Is that our station sensor... armed? Yeah. No aggressive posture. Our, our communication was definitely destroyed in the, uh, the eddies, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, I heard Captain, a very tragic. <laughs> I heard a question from uh, Commander Kelly. If is the station armed? Um, yeah. Uh, you could spend to obtain information if you'd like, uh, based on Durathal's sensor roll. Yep, spend it. Okay. Uh, there do not appear to be any armaments. All right. In that case, we need to. Look for non Romulan life signs, I think. Which we already have discovered. That, well, 
Yeah, oh, yes, but can we identify them? Uh, <laughs> there's Durathal, can you penetrate and get the type of life signs without being detected? And I'm going to turn to uh, the troll. If it comes down to it, how good at you are pretending you're part of the Romulan Star Empire? It helps that I was once a part of it, so I could probably do it. Well, this is the Tal Shar we're talking about here. There will be challenges and counter signs interspersed throughout normal conversation. Hmm. Well, if you hope that I'm your best hope at communicating with them, so if that is your intention. You see Durathal speaks up. Um, Go ahead. Commander, there appears to be many Romulans, uh, 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 contingents of Romulans on the station. However, there is a shielded area I can't penetrate with without activating, without overtly attempting to penetrate it. Sorry. Understood. Uh, okay. the troll looks up and says, we're being hailed again, Commander. We do what we're gonna do. Okay, cool. Kelly, did you get the communications back online yet? By some miracle, sir. Where are we here? <laughs> Our stealth <laughs> mission ended so quickly. <laughs> uh, we have been drifting, yeah. sir. <clears throat> okay. Let's go with that. Uh, put an extra kick of static on that communication while you're repairing it when we open hail. Hi, sir. Audio only, I assume? Audio only. All right, I'll see what I can to uh, static this up while still keeping us intelligible. Uh, you hear on the other end, Federation Vessel, you are in violation of the Romulan neutral zone. You will immediately disengage, or we will fire upon you. We know they have no weapons. <laughs> we already scanned. I'd also like to point right. out that uh, accusing us of violating the neutral zone is pretty fucking rich. Yeah. Well, we... We already scanned them, and we know they have no weapons. Uh, I'm just going to nod back to Detrol, and just nod towards the screen. And your attention is to have her speak? Yep. Uh, okay. Detrol says, Station, this is Sub-Commander Detrol. Agent of the Tel Shiar. I have captured this vessel and then bringing it back to to display it for my father who I believe is here. There's a pause. Um, and then the communication cuts. Uh, and the big channel is ended. I think that went well. I don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Duratol, uh, Duratol says, uh, Captain, coming out of the... And on your sensors, everybody, you see two Romulan scale three birds of prey coming out of the nebula. They lock weapons... And that's where we're going to end for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have not made an aggressive posture yet. This can still work. <laughs> I don't think, I think we can. <laughs> I thank everybody who lis uh, for listening, and I hope uh, to see everybody next in two weeks. Awesome. You can end the recording whenever. Can't tell me how to live my life. Okay.